Hi friends, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. It is day seven of Creep on June and um, I get to be uh, the person who plays with you today and I'm so excited about that. If you don't know me, my name is Michelle Ray Landry and I'm so excited you're here. I am a vintage loving, treasure hunting, mixed media journal maker and I love things that are a little offbeat. So this is really in my wheelhouse. Now, when Tracy um, invited me to be on this collaboration, I got really excited and I was thinking about what I could do. And um, last week I made my video and I made my project. And then now day seven, I'm feeling a little bit like what I had to offer you today is a little repetitive. Um, obviously we don't know what each other's making and even though my project is slightly different than what Tracy did on day two, it's similar enough and there have been enough projects that I really felt like I needed to give you an offering that wasn't in that same line. Um, and it is slightly a different project than Tracy's. Uh, Tracy's was a hidden compartment shadow box uh, with a window. And mine is a mini, like half the size mini matchbox ornament that will go on a Halloween tree. So it's similar and different. It's a, it's a similar take, but it's a different process. And it's different enough, I wanna keep it up there, and it plays a part into what I'm doing right now. So my thought is, I am doing a video today on the 7th and on the 25th. And what I wanna do is give you a couple of projects today on the 7th that you can start or create. And if you wanna join me on the 25th, we're gonna bring it all together to make a Halloween tree. So essentially, we made the ornaments in the other video, which I will post at the same time as this one, so you'll have it today. And then the other thing is I am going to make a snippet roll out of, out of Tracy's kit. And that snippet roll is going to play a part in the 25th video. It's going to play a big part in what I do with the Halloween tree. And the Halloween tree is a piece of decor that I think would be really funky and cool to put on, you know, a tabletop or a shelf or um, just including in your October or spooky decorations. And will just really, I think, be something you could look forward to taking out year after year and say, hey, I made that. So uh, I'm gonna be posting two videos today, the first, well, I'm not sure which one you'll watch first, whether you'll watch this one or the other one, but know that I created a second one because I was really feeling like my first one might be a little repetitive, but I also wanted to give you the background and the process in case you wanted to jump on with the tree and make the ornaments. So please do go check that out and let's jump into this project today. So one of the things I think is really cool about um, this kit is how much ephemera is in it and how it's scaled. And you'll see me talk about that in the other video as well. And I have this this Halloween tree in my head and I thought for the base, I'm going to be using a snippet roll um, to decorate the base. So I need to make that snippet roll. So I thought that's what we would do today using the kit that Tracy has for us, which is the Halloween Mega Matchbox Mini. So I'm going to use this Amazon packaging as the base of the snippet roll. I'm gonna use it because number one, I love the way it sounds, it's so crinkly. It's got that brown craft backing, which is wonderful. And then also, if you can tell, this got ripped. Inside this packaging is this, this little this foam stuff, which makes it slightly thick and padded. And why I like that is because if you're going to use it for a traditional snippet roll in your journal, it gives it some nice heft. You could also use it, this project, as a um, 
cover for a journal as well, just not cutting it into slices. So we'll go over that as we go. So let's just jump in. I'm gonna pull back just a little so you can see a little bit more of this, this paper. And basically this side will be the reverse side of the snippet roll, okay? And we're going to be collaging on this side. Now, I don't want this video to be a gazillion um, minutes long. And there's that second video for you to watch. So I'm going to try to make this as succinct as possible. So the first step I'm going to take is I'm going to go through all of those um, matchbox templates that she made for us and the envelope templates. And I'm going to start cutting them and just gluing them on um, randomly on the paper. And here it is, I, I really sped up the film and you can see I'm just really not thinking a lot about it, just cutting and placing, gluing big chunks of the templates and pieces of the ephemera all over randomly with a glue stick to fill one side of the mailer. So now that you've seen me do this half, I'm gonna do this half. I'm keeping it with the fold there and I'll tell you why after. So again, I'm just going to cut. So I'm just gonna take these matchbox kits and cut them in a way that fills space. Now you can cut them in smaller pieces or you can cut them in bigger pieces. We're going to be layering, so those lines are not gonna make that much of a difference. I think I am going to put this big piece here because where this rip is, I really want covered. I think at this point, most people are familiar with snippet rolls. But if you are not and you are new to junk journaling, they are a great way to get rid of scraps. And they are really awesome little things to have in your have on your desk because you can make tuck spots, belly bands, you can decorate a page really quick and effectively with them. And it's just a really wonderful thing to have. And I find them really fun and relaxing to make because you don't need to overthink it. You're really just putting images on randomly, not overthinking it, not trying too hard, just enjoying that process. This side, I'm opting for some bigger chunks of scraps rather than smaller that I have on this side. And we'll, we'll compare the two. We'll see what we like better. Um, this is just plain. I think by using bigger pieces, it's going to be interesting to see how this kit works on that. So by doing two different sides slightly different way. I think that's going to be a good example for you to see how you want to approach a snippet roll. And even if you're like, I'm not wasting Tracy's kit on a snippet roll, let me just say you're going to have scraps at the end, right? There'll probably be little scraps from this kit floating around your desk. And um, it's just a really wonderful way to use those scraps up so they don't get lost somewhere. And as other artists have pointed out already in their videos, this um, Matchbox mini kit goes really well with a previous kit that Tracy has in her shop, I think. It was like the creepy compendium, maybe it's called, from last year or last fall. So 
bigger sheets of paper that you may have are really great for the bases, for the base of um, a snippet roll. So I'm really going in with some really big pieces. I'm using like a good portion of the matchbox, you know, the, the matchbox template, as you can see, which makes the filling of the base even quicker, right? <clears throat> One of the best parts about this, everybody can have confidence in a snippet roll. You need no previous crafting experience. Sort of like making a master board, except more flexible and you can store it and use it when you need it, which I really love. I'm actually gonna take that black piece off and use that as a filler. I'm going to use this instead. Almost done. Getting really close. And that was super fast, right? There. So now I'll turn over this side and cut anything off that's sticking over. And we have the, the base layer of our snippet roll. Now I kept the fold in here because if this ends up being a journal cover, it would be nice to have an easy place where it folds. So that's the only thing. Maybe I will see if I even keep that folding. I might collage over it. Okay, so now that I have my base, I want to use less of these templates and more of the little pieces that were part of the kit um, as ephemera. And the goal is to make just, we're going to build upon what we already have. So something like this that is a picture is rather large. So maybe I don't want to keep it this large. Maybe I do. I think I'm going to ink it. And then this stuff I'm going to put on with a little bit of like art glitter glue, just so that it stays down, the second layer stays down good, and I'm a little bit more exact with the, the glue. I've had a little bit of a, a glue mishap off camera, so I'm gonna have to put the glue on in sort of an odd way until it gets off the top of my bottle I was trying to refill. So I'm, I put the witch there. I have a heart here. Let's put that on. Um, I think I could do some words here. Waltzing wizards, uh, witches might be good since there's witches really close by. I don't know if they'll end up being in the same trim, but might work. So let me make sure I'm all in camera so you can see as I choose things. Here's one of Tracy's cats. I, I'm i gonna be honest, I struggled with fussy cutting these cats and this one's tail did not survive. So I'm going to ink what tail is left. And even though it's a what it's got white eyes on it, I think it's okay. <clears throat> I think the tail needs to somewhat go off off the side of the paper in order for it to be effective. So maybe we'll put it by this witch. 
like this. Since there's black cats in there, it might be cute. And I can have it go a little bit off the paper so that it, it's not so noticeable that I completely uh, decapitated the tail there. <laughs> it'll just it'll just go off the paper, which is fine. And let's see what else I choose. All right, I have another big picture. I'm going to put that aside. I have this moth. And I'm having another glue issue. These little bottles, when you push them, sometimes it comes out the bottom. So I'm going to have to glue <laughs> from the bottle, which is really silly. So let's see what else. I So I have the moth. And I really want the moth to stand out. So I want it to be on a dark background. So... I'm just gonna glue right from the bottle, from the spot stuff that's, you know, leaked off. A little bit of a pain, but I think at first, when there's a lot of glue in there, there's just a lot of buildup. All right, so I'm gonna stick that on there. I'm gonna put it kind of skewed to the side. All right, now I have a, I have another cat I could put on. I wanna trim just this little bit of white I have on him. And if you have a little bit of white on, if you fussy cut like I did these cats, which is really hard, <laughs> then I would just take my distress ink and run it over the top to get any little white pieces. And the cat would go on something light, like this pattern here. I really like that. And I like the bird sitting right underneath it. So let's see if we can get this guy glued on there. It's almost like the cat is about to peck his tail. All right, we have some of these great circles that were included in the kit. This one I can trim a little bit better and I'll ink the edges. This is a really, really good way to use up the bits and pieces of ephemera in the kit that maybe you didn't use in your project. Maybe they didn't fit or color-wise they weren't quite right or whatever whatever reason why they didn't make the cut, they can make the cut here because it all works here. So let's put this, this circle. I'm gonna put that there. These numbers are super great. And I like when there's edges. Like right here, I can see a little bit of um, a little bit of packaging that didn't get covered. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a little bit of washi tape that I have handy. Just on that spot. I probably should put down glue because washi tape over time can peel up. Washi tape's a great thing to put on those little cracks that maybe you missed or like I just missed. And then right here I have an edge that comes together, an edge that comes together, an edge that comes together. Um, putting something on all those edges and gluing it down is going to make that very secure, which is really good. And we have this cute little owl and I was gonna fussy, cut, I was thinking about fussy cutting him out. So, but now I, I like the idea that he's a photo, you know, that he is a piece of ephemera. I don't know why this glue keeps coming out the edge of the bottle, but I'll work it. I think putting, gluing things on top of edges and corners just makes for a much stronger um, s snippet roll when the time comes to cut it.
and you don't have to make things all go one way. In fact, um, snippet rolls are a lot more interesting when things do are going different directions. So, you know, things can go up, things can go down. Uh, varying how it how it is is really good. I, I, I think I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to put a spell on you right against the witches. I think that'll be cute when one day when we cut it. I don't know for sure because cutting it is, you know, you no, never know what's going to happen when you cut it. So then this ticket takes a really, or this little label has a nice little, I'm going to put it over all of these edges. That's going to help stick it down. I have an, the big eyeball, which is fun. Um, why this keeps leaking is beyond me. If you know why, please let me know. I just got these little bottles and I thought they would help me from having my glue dry out, but um, I'm kind of not impressed at the moment, right? They're, they're kind of getting all over me. The point was not to waste glue and all the glue coming out the sides is, is wasting glue. And then of course I have to wipe off my sticky fingers. Okay, so now we have some we have a, a spider's web which doesn't really stand out on the black so I'm going to see if it can stand out somewhere else. Pretty good. I'm going to go on the diagonal. And I'm okay that I went over the that I went over the um, crow. So, all right. I love these ladies that she included, these, these bat ladies. I think they are just the cutest. And I'm going to put it near waltzing wizards, waltzing witches. I think that fits really well. And I'm going to put it on the diagonal. She'll go a little bit off of the page. And even these, these, uh, labels that are blank these these are cool they make for a nice second layer this ar this arsenic label See, I'm, I'm putting them on all different directions. And I actually am going to go over this seam there. This butterfly. And now I'm just building the layers and I'm not overthinking it too much. I'm just changing directions. I'm trying to pick colors. I like the spider web, so I'm going to put the spider with the spider web. This 106 is cool. Of course, I want that to be on the diamond. Uh, where would it? I like it there, all those intersections. And when, if you're using white glue, you know, this is why I like doing glue stick first because glue stick doesn't buckle so much as white glue does. 
So that was a good first base. Um, but now I'm putting white glue on to really keep these on and it is buckling a little, which will end up being fine. But I'm also going to be using a sewing machine. If you're not going to be doing a sewing machine, you I might suggest doing just glue sticks so that you're not having a lot of buckling. It will dry just like in my other video when I talk about the fact that it feels like it's it's very wet and buckling. It will end up drying um, very stiff and secure, but while it's drying, it can be quite wet. Oh, we got to find a place for the creep on June. I'm going to put it right there. This is this is the um the the fold, so I want something big enough that it will give it some structure. Could do this on a on an angle. Let's see if there's anything else I want to add. It does look pretty busy. I'm going to take a step back. And see if there's really any areas that I feel need a little bit more of something. There's a little bit of room here and a little bit of room there. I have a skull. Let's see what else I have. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. It will go behind the circle and across here. I do like this circle a lot. I'm going to cut this one out again. All right. I think that will bridge the gap somewhere. There's a lot of... Maybe I'll put it on the edge. Look at this, I'm gonna cut it in half. And I think I'm gonna put it on the edge there. And the other half I will put on the edge down here. I find this kind of fun. I feel like one thing needs to be there. So let's see what happens if I rip it and rip it and just put that little bug snippet in there. Oh, there's this, this cute guy here. So here I have really watered down acrylic white paint and acrylic gold paint. I'm in my bathtub and I'm just going to take this splatter brush and I'm just going to do some splattering now. Some light splattering on the page. I think when I splatter, I think what it does for it is it brings it a, a sense of cohesiveness. Like, I don't want to overdo it, but I just feel like the little bit of, of splatters, especially on the dark areas, really bring in a sense of um, cohesiveness within. This is obviously not something you have to do, but I like to do it. I like to have that, that light on it. Now I'm going to do the gold. It's been my experience that gold doesn't doesn't stick up as much. It's not as as bold a contrast, but it, it adds a little sparkle sometimes. And 
I do try to get it like on the labels and things like that. Let's get a couple dots. I'm going to actually just touch on certain areas I want it on. And it's hard to do this holding a phone. I can be more accurate if I wasn't doing that. So now I have that and I'm going to let it dry. Okay, and I don't know if you can see the lights and the darks from the splattering. It's really brought, I think, like it made a little bit more of another texture and on a snippet roll it makes it really effective but now I want to bring in a few darks but I don't want to spray black that is always a little bit too I can't go backwards with that we'll put it that way so I like to use this stamp it's a mainstay for me and some black archival ink and I'm going to go in and essentially <laughs> add some more splots but these are very controlled um, because they are all part of a stamp. And another kind of cool thing is because I'm printing with EcoTank on a an inkjet, not a um, not a laser, if the paper got too wet from the splattering, some of that ink has, has, uh, I guess, run a little bit, which gives another different effect, which I like a lot of grunge and I like a lot. I'm a mixed media person, so those kinds of things excite me. But if that's not your thing, then you can you can stay away from adding these these splots and things like that to it. I don't want to overdo it, but I'm going to put a couple more on. And then I am done. I am going to let... Then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so look at it. It's all dry. And you can see there's, you know, there's the base layer. Then there's a layer that we put on top. And then there's different um, splatters and ink. So it the ink in the splatters bridges all the layers together in my opinion this could be the finished project for you but for me i want to take it one step further and i want to throw it through my sewing machine and i just want to do a, a single stitch not like a zigzag or anything and just kind of some messy um, threads that will bind all of this together, make it super strong and also give it that one last layer so i'm going to do that and i'll be right back Okay, it's done. All that's left is to cut it. But before we cut it, I have to say, this came out even more amazing than I thought it would be. Using this um, slightly padded uh, Amazon packaging and then putting the, the sewing on it, it almost quilts it. It feels almost like fabric. I wish you could feel this. It's paper, yet it's not paper. It's flexible and it's almost fabric-like. And it reminds me in person of almost something that's quilted. And if you wanted to make this a journal, right, you could, you could fold it so that there was like flaps inside and it would make a great journal cover, a soft journal cover. You could even, if you wanted to, take some matte Mod Podge and coat this if this was going to be, if this was going to be a cover for me, I'd do one of two things. I would um, either Mod Podge it so that all the little bits and pieces were completely stuck down, and I might do that before I sewed it and let it dry overnight and then sew it just so that it really is like one solid piece and there's no little edges that could get caught somewhere in there. Or the other thing that would be exciting would be to cut it in panels and then laminate it and punch holes in it and make a hard cover for a hard journal. So 
you know, as I said earlier in this video, my goal here was in my head, I have this picture of a piece of decor that I'm going to finish at the end of the month that's like a Halloween tree with ornaments, and I'm going to be using pieces of the snippet roll. But what if you don't care about the tree or the ornaments? Just doing the snippet roll, just doing this, this project lends itself to all sorts of jumping off points. So that's what's so exciting here is that um, I think that this is a great project to merge with other projects or as a standalone. It's going to be hard to cut this, but I'm going to do it because I want to show you that even though this feels cool, the snippet roll is even more cool in my mind and more versatile. So remember how I put bigger pieces on one side and smaller pieces on the other and I was going to weigh it out? I honestly don't see any difference. I don't see any difference in how it feels at the end. So I guess it doesn't really matter if you use smaller pieces or bigger pieces in the end. Now I am not going to make this a journal cover. So I am going to take out my cutting board and I am only going to slice one half because I want, I don't know yet how exactly I'm going to use this um, for my Halloween tree. I, I know in my head what I think, but that doesn't always, you know, pan out the way you think. So I'm actually just going to cut it in half for now. And keep in mind when you cut it, it's going to cut, but, it, but because of all those threads, I'm going to have to go in with scissors and just, you know, finish the cut because all those threads want to hang on. And, you know, you might get a little bit like worried because you're cutting an image in half and that feels, you know, like wrong or you're, you, because when you look at it, right, you might say, oh, I really love this area right in here. Or you might say, I love the cat and the way the splat is. So when you're then about to cut it, that's the key. The key is you can do it a few different ways. You can just make a decision and say, I'm going to make this snippet row, you know, three inches wide and just make that decision. It's going to be three inches wide and then just suck it up. Whatever it cuts on, it cuts on or you can cut it based on what you want to work around. I'd like to make it actually in a roll and show you how to make it in a roll. Let's see. I'm going to make it three inches wide. I don't know how many pieces I'll get for that, but that's what I'm going to try to do. So this will be my first cut. Again, it's thick and because of the threads, I'll have to go back in with my scissors, which isn't hard. I just kind of feel my way through it. And that is really a cool strip. I'm going to show you in a minute. And then I'll probably only get two three inch strips from this side. But you'll get the idea. What can you do with snippet rolls? If you, well, first of all, let's take a, a, a look at how cool this is. Even though we're cutting into pieces, it, it, it's such a great collage and what you can do is sew them together if you want with your sewing machine just slightly overlap them or you could glue them and then once you have them all laid out you'll just roll them around something so here's a snippet roll I have on I just have it on a paper towel and I have it clipped with a paper clip. And as you can see, you can just unroll it and snip a little bit at a time for an embellishment, for a belly band, whatever, but it's ready to go. So for Halloween, you could be making yourself 
a um, really cool belly band that I mean snippet roll that way and then when it's Halloween time you have ephemera ready to go to snip and clip it's already backed so it can be journaling cards it can be whatever let's pretend this is a journal I just took out blank paper so it's easier to see you can make an edge with a tuck right and that instantly makes the page um, Halloweenish right let's let's get a Let's get this one right here with the witch. And right, very, very easy to do that. You could make a flip. You could make a belly band and slip things in. You could cut it on a diagonal like, like this and, and have a corner tuck pocket, you know, a tuck. You could put it up here and have a tuck. It's ready to go. And that's what I love so much about... Um, what I love so much about snippet snippet rolls. The other thing too is if you wanted to get really fancy, you could sew some beads here and there on your snippet roll. You could add some charms, you know, like a spider or an owl or, you know, some gears. You could add little tiny things either on the snippet roll themselves or off the snippet roll if it's coming off of a page. So there's just so many, so many things you can do. I'm gonna keep this intact, this side, because I think I know what I wanna do with these thinner strips. And I think I know what I want to do um, with this thicker piece. So day seven snippet roll with Tracy's kit and then if you have the time sometime today or this month I'll throw the second video in which is also going to be up today which is for these little tiny ornaments that are going to go along with this for the Halloween tree. So that gives me now two weeks uh, the 25th and it's the 7th so two and a half weeks I have to now finish up my Halloween tree. I will come back on the 25th and show you all the pieces and parts and how they went together. I hope you'll join me for that and it gives you plenty of time if you want to join in and if you're like hmm, maybe maybe I'll do that in October I'm not sure at least you have this project to start with today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tracy, for inviting me into this challenge. I can't wait to see the rest of the makers and what you guys come up with. Everybody is so inspiring to me. I will see you very soon. Bye. And here's some close-up images of the snippet roll textures and just all the cool things that Tracy included in the kit. They really, really make for awesome snippet rolls. If you found this video interesting, informative, or maybe even inspirational, I'd love for you to like the button below and subscribe to my channel. I'll post the other bonus video with the three ornaments today, and I'm really hoping to pull together a project, a Halloween tree on the 25th. See you then.